As everyone knows, inside of a van, every cubic inch matters. I tore it apart and did it all myself and did it the way I want it. This is uh, my pop top that I had installed a few years ago by Colorado Camper Van in Loveland, Colorado. It's not always glamorous. Hey guys, my name's Stu. This is my 2016 four-wheel drive Sprinter, 144 inch wheelbase. Come check it out. Uh, welcome to my van. Let's start with the kitchen. This is my stove here. It's 7,500 BTUs, marine stove. Works really good. I often cook outside, so this is just a single burner for doing whatever I need to do inside. But usually if I'm parked out somewhere camping, um, cooking outside. Uh, I've got a nice deep black stainless steel sink hooked up to a 30 gallon water system over my wheel well. Uh, I went for a nice open concept here with this kitchen. I have a primary sleeping area upstairs, so I was able to make some compromises with space. Uh, I've got a Corian counter, uh, very durable, easy to clean, pretty maintenance free. Uh, yeah, so I've got a truck fridge. It's about four cubic feet, 12 volt, draws about four amps when running, so pretty efficient. Uh, I got a small freezer space in there as well. I've got a 30 gallon potable water system that's over my wheel well and a 18 gallon gray water tank, which is mounted on the underside of the van. Uh, and that's all hooked up to a motorized ball valve so I can open and close that uh, remotely inside. So up here, uh, this was a lot of dead space. And when I was designing this van, realized that I could turn these into little cubby areas here. So uh, for the most part, I use this for toothbrush, toothpaste, any of the grab and go items that I use. I've got sunscreen up here. Um, on the beach quite a bit, often at a kite beach. So yeah, all the easy grab and go items are up here. Uh, my whole electrical system for controls is all right up here. So I've got controls for my strip lights, puck lights, upstairs and downstairs. Uh, this is the mechanism for the power lift for the upstairs bed. My MPPT solar controller is there. And this, this is my battery monitoring system and inverter, uh, a Magnum 2000 watt inverting system. All right, welcome to the back part of the kitchen here. Um, I incorporated a flip up lid for my hot water system. I have a isotemp five gallon hot water heater that runs off of either 110 or off the engine coolant. Uh, inside here as well, I've just got a bunch of extra space. As everyone knows, inside of a van, every cubic inch matters. So camping gear, keep my Starlink dish in here. And in the back, right behind this, I have a shower system that I use for rinsing off my dog, myself, um, any of my gear and equipment. Works out pretty well. I decided to go for an outdoor shower system rather than an enclosed shower, just with a 144 inch wheelbase. It was too much space that it would occupy. So for storage here, uh, I incorporated some drawers, all match grain with this bamboo ply. So slide out drawers right here. And yeah, pots, pans are kept in here, plates, cups, and cutlery. So I went with bamboo in here for all my building material with walls, cabinets. Uh, chose bamboo because it's sustainable, very strong, and also pretty impervious to moisture. So with my lifestyle and going to beaches and carrying wet gear in here, it was really important to have something that wasn't going to delaminate over time. And also with this natural wood, if something does happen, inevitably if it gets a nick or a scrape, I can touch it up easily with some tongue oil and be on my way. For outlets over here, I incorporated a couple 110 outlets on the underside if you need to plug in a blender, anything like that. I, up here I used 65 watt USB chargers. They charge really quick and out of the way. So if I need to charge something on the road, plug it in, stash it. When I get to my next spot, it's ready to go. Over these last six years, I've traveled all over the US and a little bit into Canada and Mexico. Uh, the people I've met on the road have been awesome. Uh, it's really cool to show up in a remote place in the middle of nowhere and have that sense of community with other people that are doing the same thing. I got into this originally um, wanting to have that travel lifestyle. Um, I come from that travel lifestyle. Uh, I've been doing 
I've been a merchant marine for the last 12 years, so uh, working on board a ship as a navigator and doing uh, two months on board a ship and then two months off. So when I thought about buying this van, uh, I realized that you know a lot of that time that I had off I might as well spend it traveling. I love it so much that um, I've changed up my career and my lifestyle and actually started doing some van builds right now uh, here in St. Petersburg, Florida. So uh, it's just really cool to be part of this community and also see it grow and become what it is today. Um, I think it's here to stay and only going to continue to grow. So um, yeah, it's pretty cool and also yeah realize that not everybody has that skill set to build their own van or don't have the time or the means so uh, when I originally had this van uh, I had it built out by a company I had it built out by Sportsmobile and after about four years um, things were just starting to show their age and you know the quality of the build wasn't up to snuff so I tore it apart and did it all myself and did it the way I wanted. All right, um, on the other side, the driver's side, extending here with more kitchen, I have a 800 watt microwave. When I'm not using it, I put my hats in here and some extra counter space over here. This is also a flip up and basically just uh, electronics and junk drawer for anything that I need to grab and store. And last but not least, I did a pull out garbage system and have four trash cans in here. So no worries if I'm remote and in a remote place and worried about, you know, my waste. Yeah, and down beneath the trash here is where I keep my toilet. I just have a standard Thetford cassette toilet that I use and I made this cabinet as small as possible to fit it. Uh, if I did it again, I'd probably change the dimensions a little bit because I realized that I can't fit any other toilet in there other than this, but works perfectly fine for me. Um, if I'm traveling anywhere um, in a city, I have access to bathrooms, so it's uh, kind of an emergency only type of toilet. And all my storage otherwise is here. I have this storage here for clothing, bedding pretty much anything you want. I tried to keep it open just to be a flexible space. Beneath this is my pantry. Um, like on this side, I incorporated a large face and then two drawers in here. This is where I keep my clothing. Um, I know a lot of people do this. It comes in pretty handy to use these packing cubes. Very flexible, I can move these around. And seasonally in my clothing storage, you know, if I'm here in a warm climate, I'll put all my clothes in something like this to where I can grab and go. And then right now, all my cold weather gear is all in these packing cubes. Yeah, so these latches are from RV Labs. They have a mechanism in here, which has a little notch in it, which locks these in. Um, in thousands of miles of bumpy roads and driving, knock on wood, I actually haven't had one of these fail or open up. Um, in my previous build, that was a constant source of frustration. So I did a lot of research on that to find something that would be, uh, well, aesthetically pleasing and strong and pretty happy with these from RV Labs. See this fan here, um, I actually just put in a few months ago. I do have an attic fan, but wanted a little bit more circulation in here. so. This uh, rotates around 360. It's very flexible with however you want to position it. Um, if I go somewhere and my dog's in here, I can also run my air conditioning system. I do have a um, hybrid 12 volt 110 um, undermount AC that works pretty well. Yeah, it's all incorporated into my battery system. Uh, I've got a 270 amp hour Battleborn lithium battery, 350 watts of solar on my roof. Uh, for other charging, I have dual Victron Orion 30 amp DC to DC chargers. It runs everything that I need. Um, not much of a power hog. I know that a lot of people go with bigger battery systems, but for me and with my pop top, having that open airflow all the time, I don't have to run the AC that much. And that's by far the biggest power consumer. All right, welcome to the living room, which is right beside the kitchen and right beside everything else as you have in a van. Uh, 
This pulls out to a bed, pretty comfortable, um, but my primary sleeping, if I'm somewhere where I can get away with it, is up top in the pop top. Uh, underneath here, I do have more storage. So yeah, bulk storage for any equipment, bags, gear, and uh, all my electrical system is up here. I do have a diesel heater. It's a planar heater and uh, yeah, all the times I've used it, it's been great. Um, used it at altitude, no problems there. Uh, it's really efficient for fuel consumption and for uh, 12 volt power, it barely draws anything. Over here, some more controls that I have. My max air fan remote is right here. Uh, this is the thermostat that controls the air conditioning. It's actually a Wi-Fi thermostat. So if I have my Starlink on and I'm somewhere else, um, I'm able to check the temperature turn it on and off if my dog's in here, which is really nice. More USB charging, and this is the control panel for my heater. All right, welcome to the second story of my van. This is uh, my pop top that I had installed a few years ago by Colorado Camper Van in Loveland, Colorado. Uh, I've got four inches of memory foam. It's a two-piece mattress. When I'm not using this bed, I've got some bed platforms that can stack together and all this folds back. So I've got more headspace down below. Uh, this is a low roof fan, but with this top on here, uh, it raises the inside standing room by about six inches. So it's comparable to a, a high roof fan in the front area. Uh, it's a insulated canvas, double walled. So I've camped down into the teens comfortably up here with the heater going and it's maintained 75 degrees all night. I have windows all the way around. So when these are zipped, unzipped, uh, I've got panoramic views all over the place. It's a really awesome way to camp and sleep when you're eight feet off the ground and feels like you're sleeping in a tent. Uh, my attic fan is a max air fan right here and back over where I sleep, where my head is uh, I did a skylight up here so I can open that up and actually stand up and whatever, look outside and uh, pretty cool for stargazing at night as well. Uh, so the lift mechanisms are all 12 volt. There's two lift motors on each side that go to these really robust arms. So you can see here, it's really stout. Um, I've been parked sideways to the wind overnight and like 30 to 40 mile an hour winds and this thing's rock solid. I do have control to these lights down below and up top to a remote switch. So anytime that I, well, the battery's dead, but when the battery is working, I can dim these, turn them on, turn them off without having to get downstairs. Uh, I've got a little quarter 20 mount right here that I can mount a projector to and up front, I've got a roll down screen so I can sit up here and watch movies. It's pretty nice. It's so different for everybody, but the experience that I, experiences that I've gotten from traveling have been invaluable. Uh, everybody always asks me, well, why are you traveling? Are you trying to find a new place to live? I get that all the time and it's not that at all. Um, I'm just trying to experience new places. And I've kind of adopted this philosophy that, okay, there might be some days where you're traveling in a van and you end up sleeping in a Walmart parking lot. It's not always glamorous. It's not always that picturesque type of thing. But, you know, every day is a new experience and I love that. Like, I've traveled to some beautiful places and not so beautiful places, but I've got to experience so much of this country that without a van, I don't think I would have had any chance of doing it. So definitely opened up a lot of experiences for me. And uh, whether I do this full time for many more years, or if I do this in a hybrid lifestyle, um, I don't see it going anywhere. I made a drop down table here. So if I'm cooking outside, this is usually where I'm doing it with a portable cooktop. I decided to get a little artsy with this and made this myself with a, a router and epoxy. So happy with how it turned out and a little bit of a art piece in the van. 
Uh, on the back of the van here, I've got a large storage box that I keep tools, recovery gear. Um, for anyone that full times in a van knows things are gonna break and you need the tools to fix it. So this was my solution to having more storage. Uh, on the other side, I ended up moving my spare tire from the under of the van up to that side of the door. Works out pretty well for any possibility. I haven't had to use it yet, but worst case scenario, if I get stuck somewhere and chassis deep in mud and have a spare tire mounted on the underside of the van, it's going to be essentially useless. So also have recovery boards here. They're well used and worth every penny. Um, I've used them a lot in remote places where otherwise I wouldn't have been able to get out, especially on my own. And here I keep my water hose, my 30 amp cord and uh, firewood is a really nice thing. If I'm traveling around and driving throughout the day and find some wood on the side of the road, it's easy to stick it in there and makes it a lot easier when I get to my campsite. Don't have to go rummaging around the forest to find some campfire wood. Back here, I've got some more storage. These are all shelves that are on folding brackets. Uh, I can fold these up and down if I have anything large that I want to store in here. Uh, right now I've got it set up for all my kiteboarding gear, all mounted to l tracks. So very flexible space, versatile. And on the doors here, I did the same thing with some flip up shelves and storage underneath. I keep a lot of my shower stuff there and other things like my hammock or over on the other side. Yeah, this is my outdoor shower here. So able to pull this shower out or this faucet out right here. And uh, this is my mixing valve for hot, cold water. Under here um, is my wheel well water tank, 30 gallons. And to the inside of the tank, I've got another approximately six inches of space. Um, I keep my kiteboard equipment in there as well. And uh, yeah, more boards in here. I've got my twin tip and foil board that slide right in beside my wheel well tank. So like I said, this is a 2016 Sprinter. It's also four wheel drive. Uh, I went ahead and got some oversized tires on here. They're 34 inches, about as big as you can get without doing a more robust lift to it. Uh, I did do a suspension upgrade from Van Compass, a stage four. Uh, didn't do that right away, did that a few years later, and I wish that I did it on day one. Uh, night and day change in terms of how it handles. Uh, another thing I did when I rebuilt this van a couple years ago is I did this truck bed liner, it's Raptor liner. Did it as a DIY kit, turned out really good. Uh, I did put some LED lights on the front for off-road driving, plenty bright, and I've got 350 watts of solar up there, Renogy panels and also have some crossbars. I do a lot of paddle boarding and other board sports. So having that flexible space with the bars up there has been really nice. Yeah, so like I said, I'm starting to do these build outs on vans. I'm currently doing a custom build, which is great, um, but also helping people out with something as simple as needing to get their solar system installed or troubleshooting. Uh, I've got a lot of people that I've made friends with over the years in vans that have a problem and they don't know what to do. And whether it's something just as simple as electrical troubleshooting or anything like that, um, I found a lot of joy in that and over the years I've gained a lot of experience. So uh, yeah, if you want to reach out to me, um, I have a Instagram page, Narnia Van, G-N-A-R-N-I-A. Narnia van um, and a YouTube channel as well, both listed as that. So yeah, I really appreciate taking the time to do this interview with me. I've been watching Tiny Home Tours for years and uh, yeah, just out of the blue, kind of got this opportunity. I'm pretty stoked. So hope you guys are too. Uh, if you don't mind, I have an appointment with some kiteboarding here on this beautiful beach. So I'll see you guys later. See you out on the road.